Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's Thursday, it's time for magic stuff. And on today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to manage an audience member that is, let's say, tricky, let's say a little bit awkward, um, you know, whether they be drunk or whether they be um, uh, just an asshole or they're a heckler. Um, you know, I get questions on this channel all the time. How do you deal with those situations? How do you deal with volatile audience members? And on today's video, I'm going to be talking to you in depth about how to do that. And I'm even going to be including some live footage of me at actual gigs where you can see how I handle this sort of stuff. Okay, so we're going to be talking about close up magic in this in this video we're going to be talking about things from a close-up environment talking about things from a stage environment would be a completely different video so we're going to be assuming that we are learning how to deal uh, with audience members that are challenging in a close-up environment and the first thing that you need to understand is why are they doing what they're doing why are they being awkward to you uh, and there's really only a couple of different reasons. Now, the first reason is, obviously, alcohol can play a part in this. So if you're at a gig where people have been drinking, uh, you can be in a situation where uh, a person who would be perfectly okay uh, normally suddenly becomes less than okay, okay? The alcohol can play a part in this. The other time that you might have this, especially if you're a male magician, is if you go up to a table and you've kind of got that alpha male there. And what I mean by that is if you've got like a, a table of like 10 people, people and there's guys and there's girls you know there might be a person on that table that that's kind of the alpha male of the group and they're the one that everybody you know they're the one that's proud of being the life and soul of the party and they're the joker and they're the one that's making all of the jokes and then you as a professional entertainer has just come over and you're like hey let me show you some magic and you you know you're, you're doing what you do you may be doing some comedy you're doing some jokes you're you know you're performing some magic they can feel a little bit threatened and how that can manifest itself is it can manifest itself into, into them being an asshole to you because they're trying to establish, uh, you know, establish that they are the man in this little group here. So sometimes you will have kind of an alpha male that will, that will behave this way. The other time is if you're at a gig and, and you've just got somebody who is desperate to figure out how the trick works, you know, uh, and, and that's that that can happen sometimes, you know, you, you as a, um, you know, there's different people that watch magic for different reasons. Some people watch it just to love it. Uh, some people just, you know, there's so many different reasons, but some people, they have a burning desire to try and figure out how the trick works. I've been booked in the past for, uh, you know, conferences where there's engineers and scientists that are very analytical in their thinking and a lot of the time when they're watching magic they're trying to analyze what's going on because that's kind of how their brain works so you know you might have somebody who is just desperate to try and figure it out and they're constantly saying hang on is this the case is this the case is this the case um Okay. And then and then you've just got people that are just plain out and out assholes. You know, they're just they're just assholes. They're just trying to fuck with you. You know, you do get people like that as well. A lot of the time when people are actually not being the nicest of spectators, it's because they want to be the center of attention and they don't want that attention taken away from them. And the best way to deal with that sort of situation is by putting all the attention on them. Uh, doing a trick where they are the star of the show. You know, doing a trick where they do the magic. And I'll do that an awful lot. You know, if I go up to a table and I can tell straight away that there's an alpha male, I'll, I'll do a quick opening routine, but I'll say, look, I need an assistant. I need someone to help me. You right there, sir, you look like you're the sort of person that can absolutely pull this off. I'm going to make you look like a million dollars here, I absolutely promise you. And I'll do a routine where they are actually the star of the show. A perfect example of that is a routine I put out on my flipped out DVD many, many years ago called Empowerment. And I call it Empowerment because they do all of the, they do the trick. You know, it's, it's a coins across, but they're the ones that do the vanish of the coins. There's four coins and they vanish the coins one at a time and I make them out to be the absolute star of the show. Um, another way that you can do it is if you're kind of doing like a basic instant stooging thing and making them look like the star. So for example, and just off the top of my head, but a perfect example for this would be to have someone pick a card, say stop, fantastic, look at that card, side steal the card, and then say to the other person, now you're gonna hold the deck so they can see the palmed card. You right there, so you're gonna tell them the name of the card. I don't think I can do this. I'm 
I'm not good enough. You right there, you are the star of the show. There's 52 cards here. You're going to name his card. And if, they, if you get it right, they're going to give you a big, massive round of applause. And you're cueing the card to him. And he will then immediately know that you are a nice guy. You're trying to make him look good. That's another example. So a lot of the time, you don't need to kind of have heckler stoppers or you don't need to have put downs or stuff like that. You, you just need to understand why people are being the way that they are and what you can do about it to try and stop that from happening. Now, unfortunately, there are times where you are going to have to work a little bit harder. Um, there's going to be times where it's not necessarily because they want to be the centre of attention. The perfect example is people that are trying to work out a magic trick. Sometimes when people are wanting to try and work out a magic trick, they will be riding you the entire way. Hang on, even if they think they might have seen something, they will say it immediately. Hang on a second, did you do that? Did you do that? Did you do that? Hang on a second, show me that hand. And, and they don't necessarily know how it's done, but they're trying to come up with every single possible scenario. Now, if you're not careful, this can absolutely kill a performance. I mean, kill it dead. Um, because if you are getting flustered by this, and I've seen magicians do this, I've seen magicians, I was at a gig and I was watching a magician, there were like two magicians there, there was another one, I didn't know him, um, and he was doing an ambitious card for this group of people, and there's this one particular woman that was like, oh, you turned over two cards, oh, you did this, oh, you did that, and he was getting more and more flustered, and he said, he just stopped, and he's like, look, can you please stop, I'm trying to perform here, and you're not being very nice to me, and that's not the way to deal with this, you need to be cool as a cucumber the entire time, and the way to deal with it, you're, you, can't, you can't stop someone like that, if they're constantly trying to figure out the trick, you can't say, look, will you stop being nasty to me, please, I'm trying to do this, or you can't go down that route there's really two routes that you can go down the first route and I've seen I've seen entertainers do this and I've never done it but I've seen it done and it, it, it can work is is to stop and say look look I can see that you're desperately trying to work out how this is done but I'm here to just perform for you I'm here to entertain you I'm not here to challenge you. I'm here to entertain you. And I, I, don't want, I don't want to be in a situation where you constantly feel like you have to figure out how it's done. So would you prefer me to leave? Now, that is one way of dealing with it. As I say, it's not something I do, but it's one way of dealing with it. Um, what I tend to do, and my advice for you guys, is to know the material that you're performing inside out and back to front and understand the psychology of people. And what I mean by that is... If you are performing a routine, you need to know that routine so well that you can almost anticipate where spectators will think that you've done something. And the perfect example, I'll give you a perfect example before we, uh, uh, the perfect example is if I have a pack of playing cards, right? And, uh, and I do a Erdnase change. So I've got a card, I'm gonna do a double lift, and now I'm gonna do an Erdnase change. If I took my hand away like that, when the card changes, everybody's gonna think that the card's there. So a person that's trying to catch you out is gonna go, ah, show me the other hand. Do you understand? So you need to know the routines that you're performing so well that you can kind of almost anticipate where spectators that have that mindset will call you out. And you need to be three or four steps ahead of them. And you need to know that if they're going to call you out on a particular thing, you can be very, very clean and you can show at that point that there's nothing going on. Now, I've got a video that I'm going to share with you now. It was taken at a wedding a couple of years ago. And it's me performing outside at a wedding to a particular woman. Um, and she had been having, she'd had a few to drink, but she had that mindset. She was trying desperately to catch me out. Uh, she said to me afterwards, oh, I love magic, but I love it because I get, to chance, I get the chance to try and figure out how it works. And I knew going into this performance that this is what she would be like because I did some magic earlier on and she was in a group and she was doing the same thing in that group. So I kind of knew immediately she'd be uh, that sort of person. And then she called me over and said, hey, can you do another trick for me? So I'm doing Paul Gordon's Corner of Piccadilly which is an amazing routine. It's a three card trick type thing working from your top pocket. And um, I know that routine inside out and back to front. And I know exactly if I'm dealing with a spectator who can be challenging like this woman is, I know exactly 
where they're going to uh, be calling me out on it. And I, I'm, I'm three steps ahead the entire time. So I'm gonna show you this video right now. I want to look at it and hopefully everything that I've been talking about will make absolute sense. Now, what's your name, James? Hi, Amy. Amy. Hi. So we're gonna play a gambling game, you and I, Amy. Oh, I love gambling. Not for money, just for fun. You do not want to trust me for money. No, it's not. Oh. No, no. But it's a gambling game and, and it uses old playing cards. Okay. Now there's four cards all together. You heard of the three card show? No. Which is where you mix three cards up and you've got to guess which one's where. You yeah, 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 yeah. This is called the four card trick. There's three black cards and there's one uh, red card. Okay. Okay. Now the idea is you have. To... No, I'm cheating. Not yet. Now the idea is you've got to follow. Yeah, <laughs> not that good. Now you've got to follow the red card. Now if you follow it and get it right, you win. Yeah. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to get rid of one of the black cards. Okay. So that just leaves us with three red. No, let me show you. I'm not. I'm not cheating. Here, let, let me show you. Okay. Okay. Now you've got to follow the red card. Yeah. Okay. If I mix it up like this, yeah. it's kind of easy. Yeah, I like that. Where is it? <laughs> That's called lulling her into a full sense of security. Like see it. When it it's there? face down, I'm not that good. <laughs> when it's face down, it's a little bit difficult. Oh, I don't know, because you, <sighs> you made me look there. I'm not cheating. Where is it? Top, you, middle, or did bottom? You it there? No. Bottom. But you know what? If you'd said the top, you would have been wrong. If you'd said the middle, you would have been wrong. Bottom. If you'd said bottom, you would have been wrong. Yeah. Right. You'd say you're I right. It's, it's, it's up there. Write it down, though. How do you do that? Guess where it is, but did you know? Look, let's, no. do let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. I'm going to go really slowly. I'm going to put okay. it on top now. Not cheating. On okay. top right now. If I count these cards one at a time into my hand, yeah. where is it? At the bottom. So we're not saying the top then, right? It wasn't at the top, though. Look, I'll go again. Really slowly. Really slowly. Yeah. I'm trying to help. Genuinely trying to help. Where is it? Give me a clip. Where is it? Bottom. So not the top then. No, no, no. 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 Look, 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 I'm going to take it back to the top okay. and put it back to the bottom again. Okay, yeah. Stand up. I just need a check. I'm not that good. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, well. brain just is Look, here's the thing. It's a switch. That's how it works. You see, when you see me put it on the bottom, and you saw me put it on the bottom when I do that, did you see that move? That's the switch. That's when it goes to the top. Oh. The switch. Wait, watch, watch. Hold your hand up. No, 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 no. Let me show you the switch. Look, look, look. It looks like this. Watch. If I go and put it in your hand when I do that, did you see the switch? No. That's the switch. So look, 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 look. Earlier on, right at the very beginning, you said three queens. And that's oh, what Stop it. you've got. <laughs> oh, I can't No! Right. Yes! Hopefully, from watching that video, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. She was a very challenging spectator. She was the sort of person that, um, uh, that she was the sort of person that was, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, trying to catch me out the entire time. And you can see how I dealt with it. And afterwards, you know, she she was blown away. You know, the end result is you are a magician. You are being hired to do magic. You are being hired to entertain people. And you need to make sure, ultimately, that that person has had a good time. And even though she was being challenging throughout, she ended up having a good time. I'm going to play that video one more time, and I'm going to do a commentary over it, so that you can kind of see my thought process as I was performing this routine for her. Right, so first of all, you hear the hook line, which drags them in. Do you like, uh, do you like gambling? Let me show you a gambling game. Now, I'm going to be focused, and you'll see this, I'm going to be focused on the main person I'm performing for, but I am going to be acknowledging the other two people as well. But I, I, when I'm performing this sort of routine, I kind of try to make it more of a one-on-one -on -one type of situation. Now, the first move right here, the Elmsley count, um, uh, when I'm when I'm showing everything, immediately you can just tell that she's she's going to be a pain because she just calls me out even though I've done nothing, uh, which is why I then turn it face down and show it her. And that's one of the examples that I'm talking about. I couldn't, I knew I couldn't show it face up, but turning it face down, I knew would make her happy. And you see the same thing again there. You see that she's calling me out at this point. So that's when I turn them face up and show them to her. Now, at the very, very beginning, I want to be as clean as I can. And in order for her to kind of be lulled into this whole thing and to start almost trusting me. Now, you see there that she actually missed that switch. 
But I knew I didn't want to go back and do it again because she's the sort of person that would catch a Monty switch like that. Which is why I showed them face down and I went straight into the first revelation. Now, you can see over and over again that she's going to be sort of the sort of spectator that's going to get very, very frustrated about this. So then we go on to the next phase. Now, notice I'm bringing her in. I'm coming closer to her. I'm talking quieter. I'm trying, you know, as if I'm almost like trying to let her see how it works. And you can see with each phase, she's getting more and more annoyed. Um, but in a good way. It's not like a bad annoyance. It's a good annoyance. So I'm doing double lifts and I'm doing treble lifts right here, but she's not seeing anything. She is the sort of person that would try to catch everything, but it's how you frame it. You know, if, if you frame it in such a way that um, she, she's convinced that she knows what's going on, something like this, a frustration count, will fly straight past her. Now, did you notice when I put the card in my top pocket and she was like, oh, hang on a second, you know, that's not the card. And I said, let me turn it round. Well, the nice thing about that is that's what I had to do at that point anyway, but I can make out that I'm turning it around because she wanted me to. Now we're into this situation and I want you to go back and listen to this because she said at the bit at the time, oh, you're going to have three queens, which is going to be the finale for the routine. And notice, I, I just blew that off. I was like, oh, come on, that's impossible. Who do you think I am? I'm Dynamo, which, which is going to make the finale even more impressive. Now we're getting towards the end of the routine, and you can see that she's just completely lost it at this point. She's been, the entire way through the routine, she's been trying to guess what's going on. And now I'm set for the revelation, where I can call back to what she said earlier, and I can say, hey, earlier on you said three queens. And it's almost like, I didn't do that. She mentioned three queens, so that's what I've made happen, as opposed to her thinking it's actually part of the routine. Right, now, now we've looked at that, let's look at one more scenario, which is when people are drunk. When people are just drunk, or they've had quite a lot to drink, or you're in a kind of environment where um, they're kind of wanting to one-up each other. And uh, a perfect example of this is a nightclub, um, or a you know student union, or something like that, where people have had a lot to drink, and they can be very challenging. Um, we're going to look at another video right now, and the video we're going to look at was shot at a property training day that I was hired to go and do and they'd spent all day learning about property and then they had a free bar in the evening where they could and they were encouraged to absolutely get bladdered at this free bar and I was performing there outside kind of towards the end of my run I was booked from 7 till 10 I think and this was at about 9 30 outside everyone was drunk and and the group of people I was performing for they kind of had that whole mindset of ah oh, they were all swearing at each other they were slagging each other off and I just knew going into that environment I had to kind of match that and that's that's comes from my experience as a stage performer. I've spent a lot of years, probably about 10 or 15 years now, performing on stage. And when you're performing on stage, especially in holiday parks and, and comedy clubs and places like that, you can, um, you can very, you very quickly have to learn how to deal with hecklers and put them down. Um, and, and this is kind of a last, uh, this is a last resort for me. I don't go in full on hardcore like this every single gig that I do but I mean you'll see you'll see an example of this in this routine I actually turn around to the guy and say will you please shut the fuck up now I wouldn't do that at a wedding <laughs> you know where everybody's outside I wouldn't turn around to the bride and say excuse me will you shut the fuck up I wouldn't turn around at a kid's party or a family event and say will you shut the fuck up but in this environment in this situation this was appropriate and you'll see that from the reactions. So, so the routine that I'm doing is card to pocket, um, which is uh, kind of, a, I've taken about three or four different people's cards to pocket and amalgamated it into one big routine. So I'm performing a card, a card to pocket routine um, and you can see that there's this guy, this particular guy, that's trying to challenge me throughout the whole thing. He's trying to challenge me. And at the very, very beginning, you'll notice he's very vocal and he's very expressive. Um, and, and you see that I, I kind of put him in his place right at the very beginning. And it's important that I do that because I want to establish that I'm not one, I'm not one to be fucked with. You know, when you're in a group of 10 or 15 people, it can very quickly get out of hand if you're not careful. Um, and you can see in the video that I very, very quickly kind of put him into a situation where it's like, okay, don't mess with me. So I want you to watch this video and have a look at this performance. Um, what's your name? 
Donnie. Just call me Donnie. Donnie? Yeah. I'm Craig, Donnie. What's your name? I'm Craig. I just thought I'd say that. Craig. 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 Yeah. C for Craig. R for Craig. A for A. A for A. Yeah. A for A. Yeah. I for A. For a. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in my pocket. That's, yeah. That becomes important yeah. later on, okay? Yeah. It's a um, secret pocket. <laughs> I would let you feel, but I no, don't want to. No, thank you. You're wrong. You're trying to bend me over. Yeah, that's you're going to have Foreman to check it out. Yeah. You're going gonna, you're gonna to grab a number card. Any card with a number on, okay? Grab a number yeah. card out. Yeah. How do I do it? Oh, yeah. Show the camera. Don't show me. Yep. I like it. I like you can take this pen. You're going to write your name on the face of the card. Big letters. Okay, right. write your name. <laughs> this is going to really annoy you. Donnie, right? <laughs> Donnie. Okay. Yeah, this whole name, Donato. But yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Are you ready? Check this out. Come yeah, closer. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. The pocket I showed empty, you're going to put your card in this deck. Yeah. It's going to jump into the pocket. All right. Say stop. I'm watching you. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> we learn about people like you in magic school. <laughs> My king, there's an entire fucking chapter on you, right? Okay, here we go. The weird thing is, when I read the script, you didn't even have a speaking role. Right, okay. <laughs> I don't need a speaking roll, I just sabotage. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> right, okay. From the deck into he's, the pocket. He's helping you. Are you no, he's pissing me oh. off, right? <laughs> From That's the whole point. Is this helping? Point. Yeah, attention <laughs> grabbing, attention. He's helping. Into the pocket, are you ready? Yeah. Nothing wow. in my hand. Yeah. When I snap my fingers, it's done. Yeah. No, seriously, it's done. Look, in my pocket, one card. One card only. It's your card, thank you. No, it's it's got it. You don't, no, need, you don't need to. You know it's got. That was your card, right, Don? <laughs> now look, here's it. Here's the thing. People think I throw it up the sleeve, across the chest, no, down the other side. No, no, no. I don't do that. Look, 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 look. Watch. Push it in. No, 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 Push no, no, it in. Push it in. Shut. Watch. One. Is it that one? Two. Well, not anymore. Because look, nothing in my hand. In the pocket. One card. Nothing in the pocket. No, no, it's there. See? Turn it over. Have a look. So there's two ways that people think this is done. Okay. Way number one, they think there's a pocket full of cards, which is why I always show the pocket empty, Donnie. You see it's empty yeah. now. The other thing that people think I do, Sorry, is they them. think I palm the card. Now, palming cards, I shouldn't tell you this, but I don't care, <laughs> is where you, is where yeah. you do this. You yeah. see, you hold it in your hand, yeah. and then you reach into your pocket. But that's why I show my hand empty every time, Donnie. Look, it goes here. You push it in, you show your hand empty. That's important. Look, yeah. look, you show your hand empty, you reach in, it never left this pocket in the first place. So no, 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 you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. Your Donnie, as well. if you yeah. watch, here's how it works. Right. I'm telling you to watch the pocket. Yeah. Forget I'm the pocket. I'm not going to watch the pocket. pocket. Watch if the card. Watch the if the magician says, watch the pocket, don't watch the pocket. Exactly. You're going to watch yeah, the card. Yeah. Yeah. Can no. you leave yeah. your pocket yeah. out? Yeah. Okay. Leave leave your your pocket. Go. Who do you think I am? Dynamo? No. I'm going to make this into a fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. A bit like that fan, but less annoying. Right. Okay. Look. It's not going to work now. Seven goes right here. Yeah. Are you right or left-handed, Donnie? Donnie? Left. Donnie. I know, I just turned American. <laughs> Donnie. Donnie. Push, it in, push, it in. push it in, push it in, push it in, push it in. Are you ready? Do you watch yeah. the pocket, Donnie? Yeah. Were you watching the pocket? <laughs> Were you watching the pocket? No. You were watching the wrong pocket, dude. You should have been watching up there. Look at that pocket. Oh! <laughs> Your name's on it as well. That's the big, finish. <laughs> big finish. Big finish. Big finish. Donnie? Big finish. This pocket. Do you want to go one, two, or three, three seconds? Big finish. One, two, or three seconds. How many seconds? One, two, or three. Five, two. Here we go. You ready? Yes, I am really fucking good. How many seconds? Two. Two. Are you ready? One, two. Did you see it go? That's when every card in the pack, Donnie, goes except for the seven. Hold, it, hold that. No, in the pocket over here. That's, uh, that's the Rubik's Cube. That's every single card. In the what? Rubik's cube. <laughs> Where did that? Check yeah. us out my pocket. Yeah, you're the man. You're the man. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Do me a favor. Yes. Put it out of his afro. I, 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 I just showed up. That's so, from the video, you can see um, that it's a very strong piece of magic but I have to deal with it a very different way. And I think ultimately, when you're dealing with spectators, the most important thing is knowing the type of spectator that you're dealing with and understanding the best thing that you can do to make sure that this is okay. Because uh, like I say, ultimately, you are being hired and booked as a magician. The most important thing 
is the client that's booked you, whether that be an agent, whether that be a private client, whoever's booked you, the most important thing is that they are happy with your performance at the end of the night. And that's gonna be based on the reactions of the spectators. And that's gonna be based on the feedback that they get from their guests. And if their guests go back to them and go, oh, the guy was terrible, he was swearing all of the time, that's not gonna be a great situation. So it's knowing when to do what to do. So it's knowing, you know, like I say, perfect example, at a wedding, I wouldn't have done what I did at the second clip that I showed you because it just wouldn't be appropriate and I know it would have led to the client being unhappy. But in the situation that I was in, I knew not only would it defuse the situation and allow me to perform without being heckled, but at the same time, they would probably enjoy that style more than me going, hello, my name's Craig. I'd like you to pick a card for me, please, if you could. Fantastic, now let's do some amazing magic. It's knowing how to perform and when to perform in that environment, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, now, so with regards to hecklers, uh, to sum this whole video up, the first thing I would say is try to understand why they are heckling you, try to understand why they are being challenging, and if you can diffuse the situation by getting them involved in the magic, uh, whether that be as an instant stooge or a routine where they are the star of the show, if that's not possible, then you need to kind of go in a different situation. And sometimes it's just, it, it, you know, it's, it's experience is what it is. Now I will share one last thing with you, something that I do, and I, I, I talked about the Erdnase change earlier on in the video, but something that I do, and I, I talked about this in a and a once, um, but just in case you haven't seen that, something that I do sometimes, let's say I'm in a situation where I've tried to get, there's somebody who's been really challenging. It's an alpha male. I've tried to get them involved in the act. They're not bothered. Um, they're trying to, um, um, you know, make me look stupid or whatever it may be. This is kind of what I'll do. This is my ultimate kind of trick that I do when I want to put people in their place and it works every single time. What I'll do is I'll say, look, you obviously know a little bit about magic. I've been working on a new move. I bet you, you can't figure out how this, how this move works. Let me show it you, see if you can figure it out. Look, I've got a, um, I've got an ace of clubs there. Can you see that? Now this move is amazing. Watch really carefully. All I have to do is I just have to um, rub and I can make that ace of clubs disappear. Isn't that amazing? Now you do that, they will immediately think that the card's here and they will say it to you. If you frame it in this way, they'll say it's in the other hand. Now, depending on the environment and depending on the gig and depending on the people that you're performing for, you can go, what? Or you can go, sorry, I didn't hear you. Or if it's in the right environment at the right time at the right place, you can go, like that. And it just depends on the type of people you're performing for. And again, this comes with experience. But every single time I've done that to somebody, and as I say, this is a last resort for me, but every single time I've done that for somebody, and I've done this, every other person that's at this table laughs and it's like, oh my God, he got you, ha ha ha. And, uh, and, and it shut them up every single time because it kind of says to them, okay, this is a guy that's not to be messed with. And he's, it, 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 what I'm trying to say to the guy is, look, I'm here to do a job and I'm trying to do that job and you're messing with me, so please don't mess with me else I might try and mess with you back. And you really, really, really don't want that. And you know, you have to, again, it's really important to understand you have to do this right time, right place. You know, I'm not advocating challenging every single audience member. This is kind of the nuclear bomb last for me. Now you might have something else, you know, different people might um, deal with hecklers in different ways, but for me, I try to defuse the situation in a very nice way. And if I can't defuse it in a very nice way, then I will adapt my performance and adapt the routines that I do accordingly based on the audience I'm performing for and the type of person that I'm performing for. And don't forget, if you are in a walk around gig you, or you are at a close up job, you have got that ultimate option of just walking away from the table. If you're getting yourself into a situation where you're trying to do an ambitious card, for example, and every two seconds you're trying to do something and somebody's saying something or interrupting you or stuff, you can just say, look guys, thanks very much. Have a great night. I've got to get around a lot of people. I can see that maybe this isn't the sort of thing that you want to see. So have an awesome night. Thanks very much. Bye. And just walk off. That's your ultimate. And you know what? A lot of the time when you go up to a table of people and there's that one asshole, a lot of the other people on the table will want to see magic. And I, I remember going to, you know, I've gone, to, I, I, I went to a gig and um, there was a true asshole on the table and he was just being horrid, absolutely horrid, 
terribly, terribly horrid. And uh, I tried to bring him into the performance and he wouldn't. And I had a whole bunch of tables that I had to get around. I had like two hours and I had like 40 tables or something. So I was like, hey, no problem. You don't want to see magic. And he even said when I first walked over to the table, we don't like magic. I don't want to see magic. I just said, hey, no problem. That's cool, man. Thanks very much. I hope you have a great night. Um, no problem. Cool. Take care. And then I proceeded to go to every single table that was anywhere near him anywhere near his table. And I made sure that I did such a good job that people were whooping and hollering and cheering and laughing. And I made sure that every single one of those people were absolutely losing their mind and screaming at the top of my voice, uh, at the top of their voice. And what happened is towards the end of the night, the table that he was on came over and said, look, we're really sorry about him. Can we, can we see some magic, please? Um, and and asked me to come back, which is cool. So, you know, a lot of the time when you're in a situation like this, you can just beat them by being better. You know, beat them by being better, walk away. If you're at a gig and you've got lots of people to get through and they turn around and say, we don't like magic, you don't have to look at it as a challenge. Right, okay, I will change your mind. You can just go, okay, no problem. And then just blow everyone away that's anywhere near them. But now this is your chance to tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. What's your opinion? How do you deal with hecklers? Has this information been useful? Would you like me to do a follow-up video? I want to know what you think. As I say, a lot of the videos I put together on this channel, I put them together because I genuinely want to try and help people. I don't want to try and make your performance better. So if there's something you want to see, please let me know. Other than that, subscribe to the channel. We go live every single day, as you know. So I'll be back tomorrow with another video. And, um, and yeah, thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.